icebergs. They're pretty cool, right? Right? Uh, I'm sure you've seen one of these pictures before. You know the saying that goes like... That's only the tip of the iceberg. That's basically this meme. Take any subject, for example music. On the top of the picture you find information and facts, or in this case music genres, that are very well known by most people. The further you go down, the facts become more and more obscure and weird. Wait, what the hell is danger music? Okay, let's just carry on. There's a subreddit dedicated to this meme concept, of course there is, with a major focus on fictional media. You like Minecraft? There's an iceberg for you. You like Jurassic Park? There's an iceberg for you. Pink Floyd? Here you go. What about bananas? Well, I'm deeply sorry to inform you that there is no such ridiculous thing as a banana iceberg chart. Just kidding, here it is. And while these icebergs are really cool and you can actually learn some new interesting stuff about these different types of media, after all, they're just fictional. The facts might give you the creeps for a moment, but then you just carry on with your life. But on my expedition through this subreddit, one particular iceberg caught my attention. The Ford Experiment and Paradox Iceberg, posted by the user Sve... Sve... Sveo... This guy. I was expecting that the ideas presented in this meme could change my whole worldview and give me an existential crisis, so I was kinda intrigued. And to my surprise, my expectation got fulfilled. So we'll go over them and I will explain the different concepts in a simplified way. This is a two-part series. We'll cover the first three stages in this video and the last three in the next one. So without further ado, let's jump into it. This is probably the most popular Ford experiment on this chart. There are four people on a rail and a train is racing in their direction. You spot what's happening and have the possibility to pull a lever and the train will change the rail and instead only run a single person over situated on the second rail. Your first thought might be, of course I'm pulling the lever because there will be less victims. But think again, by doing so you basically kill that guy intentionally, where on the other hand if you did nothing, their death isn't technically your fault. I mean, if they are dumb enough to play on an active train rail while wearing noise cancelling headphones, which is the only logical possibility for them not hearing the approaching train, then they probably deserve it. Although you could be blamed for just standing there doing nothing even though you had the chance to save these guys. Two guys got arrested for a major crime, though the police officers have no real evidence that they actually did it. Both get interviewed separately and both get the chance to go free if they confess that the other one committed the crime. If one of the two commits and the other one stays silent, the partner has to spend three years in prison. If both stay silent, they both get to spend one year in prison, while if both commit that the other one did it, they both get to spend two years in prison. So what should they do? It would be in their best interest to cooperate, share the sentence and only spend one year in prison. But actually, it would be quite nice to spend Christmas with the family and not with some 2 meter beefcakes who ask you in the shower to pick up the soap. So you choose to betray your partner in your own interest. But remember, if your partner betrays you too, you're both going to jail longer than necessary. So what do you choose? A monkey sits in front of a typewriter and mashes the buttons. A monkey can't spell obviously, so everything he writes is completely random. Let's say the monkey is damned to spend an infinite amount of time mashing buttons on the typewriter. After a while he would have written every piece of literature that exists, that will exist and, in addition to that, literature that no one ever wrote or is going to write. Which, on the first listen sounds pretty impressive, but since everything the monkey writes is random, there's gonna be a lot of nonsense in his catalogue. Speaking of infinite literature... This concept is based on a short story by Georges-Louis Borges. Imagine the monkey with the typewriter had an infinite amount of space where he'd put his work. BOOM! Library of Babel! It's also a website that contains every possible combination of 1,312,000 characters. And you can look for basically every combination of words or letters and it shows you the books in which these combinations are used. Try it yourself! It's fun for about 10 seconds, then you remember that it's pointless to look things up since you're going to find it anyway. Oh look! It tells you to like and subscribe! 
So there's this guy Hilbert who opened an hotel with an infinite amount of rooms in order to gain more money but without considering the sheer amount of work that this concept brings with it. Well it turns out that that's a terrible idea because even after the hotel is fully booked there's still room for new people. How you ask? He simply asks the person from room 1 to move to room 2 and the person from room 2 to room 3 and so on. And since there's an infinite amount of rooms, there will be an infinite amount of people moving to the next room and just like that he made room for more. Good luck cleaning all those rooms. You idiot. Very similar to Hilbert's hotel but with an infinite amount of ping pong balls. Numerate them and put the first four in the box. Take the first one out and put it next to the box. Then put five to eight in the box and take out the second ball. Repeat this step infinitely often in a finite amount of time, so let's say one minute. How many balls are there in the box after one minute? An infinite amount? So where's ball 15? Next to the box of course. But what about ball 1 million? If we repeated the steps infinitely, it must be next to the box too. You can ask this question for every number you can think of, but if every number is next to the box, the box itself must be empty. But the box being empty implies that there was a finite amount of balls, which isn't the case. So what the fuck is going on? China is pretty big, right? In fact, the Chinese population contains approximately as much people as there are neurons in a human brain. This thought experiment asks the question, what would happen if each Chinese citizen would reproduce the action of a neuron using some sort of immediate communication? Would this formation, consisting of thousands of brains, have a consciousness in the same way that brains do? A donkey is equally as hungry as it is thirsty. If it stands in front of a stack of hay and a bucket of water, where will the donkey go first? We assume that the donkey will go to whichever is closer to him. But since both the stack of hay and the bucket of water stand in an equal distance from the donkey, it will probably just die because that stupid thing is unable to set priorities. Some sketchy guy in an alley approaches you and offers you a million dollars. Sounds not suspicious at all, right? The only thing you have to do to receive your great prize is to drink poison and die. Okay, no. But this poison will give you immense pain for one day. It won't have any negative effect on your health though. But here's the catch. You don't actually have to drink it, you just have to intend to drink it. And this guy uses some high-tech mind reading device, so you can't fake it. So if you intend to drink the poison, you will receive the money before you actually drink it, so there's no need to actually drink it. But he tells you that before, you know that you don't have to actually drink it. So is it actually possible to pretend to intend to drink the poison? You put a cat inside a box and with it a radioactive atom, a detector, a hammer connected to the detector and a glass of poisonous gas. A radioactive atom has the ability to decay. Once it does that, the detector releases the hammer that destroys the glass, killing the cat. But since an atom is a quantum object, it can be in different states at the same time, as long as it isn't observed. This means that as long as the box is closed, the atom is unbroken and decayed at the same time. That means the cat is alive and dead at the same time, until we open the box and force nature to pick one option. Space is huge. I mean, it's constantly expanding and contains an uncountable amount of galaxies, stars and planets. And from these, a shit ton are in the habitual zone of their sun and are similar sized as Earth. Plus, there has been plenty of time since the beginning of the universe for life to develop. So why aren't we part of a galactic empire yet? Shouldn't space be blooming of life? Well maybe it's because the distance between the habitual planets is too big to communicate between them or the aliens don't understand the messages we send from Earth. Or maybe we're the first planet with life and it takes way more than we thought for life to develop. And there's also the theory that intelligent life is doomed to destroy itself because of climate change, the unstoppable, uncontrollable technological progress, overpopulation or the consummation of all resources. After a long night of drinking and partying, Fisois jumps in his ship and drives across the ocean only to crash the ship at a rock formation. Don't drink and drive kids! Well now he needs to replace some planks, like one or two. But would it still be Fisois' ship after having these planks replaced? 
Probably yeah, these two planks wouldn't make a difference and the ship still got its identity. But what if you needed to replace most of the planks, would it still be Fiesel's ship? Probably not, but when does it stop to be Fiesel's ship? What is it that gives Fiesel's ship its identity? There are two boxes in front of you, one is transparent, the other isn't. The transparent box contains a thousand dollar. The other box contains either one million dollar or nothing, based on what you will choose. The point is that there's this magician who can predict what you choose. You can either choose box B or you choose box A and B. If you choose box A and B, the magician will predict this right and he will put nothing in the second box, leaving you with a thousand dollar. But if you only choose box B, he puts a million dollar in the second box, leaving you with obviously one million dollar. But some people argue that there is the possibility to get away with one million and thousand dollar. By choosing box B, you would get the promised one million dollar, but in fact you could theoretically change your mind and as you take box B with you, steal box A in the process. Which means that you actually chose both boxes, which means that the magician is actually really bad at his job. Flatland is a novel by Edwin Abbott. It's about a two-dimensional world occupied by two-dimensional inhabitants who are exposed to the three-dimensional world. Imagine a sphere falling through their world. From their perspective, it looks like a circle shrinking and growing at a constant rate. We three-dimensional beings can observe their world from above. This thought experiment suggests that there could even be more than three spatial dimensions. We just can't understand them and we probably never will. If you're interested in this topic, there's a weird animated film from 2007 called Flatland. I haven't watched it yet, but I can tell that this will end up becoming one of my favorite pieces of media of all time. Now that I'm in Spaceland, I, I can get past the soldiers to see if my brother is inside. Now you're thinking in 3D. I've got business there too. Let's go. <laughs> As old as the universe is, humans didn't exist for most part of its history. In that extremely big time period, a lot of things happened. Complicated and unlikely things for the most part. Now, imagine a vacuum. It isn't empty. There's energy inside, called vacuum energy. Imagine an infinite amount of time. Theoretically, it could be possible, although very unlikely, for a brain with memories to fluctuate randomly out of the vacuum. In an infinite time period, it would happen nonetheless. According to this theory, this scenario would be more likely to happen than the whole process of the formation of the universe that we think happened. So maybe we're all just memories inside a Boltzmann brain. You know how our brain receives electrical impulses from our senses? So basically there's this theory that says that theoretically it could be possible to connect the brain to a computer and use electrical impulses to stimulate any experience artificially. The brain would be stored in a vat filled with a liquid that would ensure its survival. So maybe you're a Boltzmann brain or a brain in a vat? Or maybe you're a brain in a vat that fluctuated out of a vacuum making you a Boltzmann brain in a vat? Or maybe... Your identical and more successful twin got chosen to be part of a new space mission, while you still live in your mom's basement, pursuing your art career and disappointing your parents. After Einstein's special relativity theory, the faster an object moves through space, the slower it moves through time. So that means that after the 10 year space mission, you will be older than your brother, since you're stationary on Earth, while your brother travels in a spaceship, which means time will pass slower for him. But your brother claims, like the narcissistic asshole he is, he doesn't move away from Earth, but Earth and space moves around him, which would make him the older twin after the mission. What? Are you stupid? You clearly move in space! There's no way for you to be older! You're right. For one to be the inertial observer, one has to move at a constant speed relative to the universe, which would be the case for Earth. But nobody cares about you, and he convinced the whole world that the universe moves around him and won the Nobel Prize. Wait, what?
You walk through the park and notice a penny on the ground. Great, must be your lucky day. But why lies the penny there? Well, someone must have lost it, right? Yeah, the guy who lost it got a call, pulled his phone out and therefore lost the penny. So basically, he lost the penny because of the invention of portable communication devices. But humans invented the mobile phone. So the penny lies there because of human existence. But actually, humans exist because the Earth is at the right position regarding the Sun and the existence of water on the surface. So basically, the penny lies there because of the existence of Earth? No, actually the penny lies there because the universe materialized out of nothing with the Big Bang. If we would be able to simulate the Big Bang a million times, would it always end up the same? With you finding a penny? If that's the case, do we even have free will or is everything predetermined? The year 1600, before the discovery that water is H2O. Imagine a planet identical to Earth on the other side of the universe, with trees, animals, humans, etc. But one thing is different, the water on Twin Earth isn't H2O but XYZ. So let's compare you on Earth and your twin on Twin Earth. You have the exact same brain, but when you think about water, you're referring to H2O and your twin would be referring to XYZ since you've never seen XYZ and your twin has never seen H2O. So although you have the exact same brain and you're using the exact same words, you're referring to two different things. That means that the content of a person's brain is not enough to determine the reference of terms they use. You have to examine the causal history of how this person acquired this term. The farmer looks for his cow but can't find it. The milkman arrives and reassures him that he saw the cow in a nearby field. The farmer takes a look for himself and sees the silhouette of a cow and is satisfied that he knows that the cow is there. When the milkman returns to his van, he double checks if the cow is actually in the field. The cow is indeed in the field, but it's hidden behind a bunch of trees. But there also hangs a black sheet inside the trees, which is what the farmer has mistaken for his cow. So was the farmer actually right when he said that he knew that the cow is in the field? I don't think that this phenomenon needs an introduction. It's basically false memories but applied to a larger group of people. Things you thought you'd remember correctly, but actually you didn't. Do you remember the Monopoly guy with a monocle? Or Looney Tunes with two O's instead of U? Well, you're just wrong. This thought experiment was created to argue for the existence of the soul. Imagine that you materialized into the air, isolated from all sensual experience. In such a scenario, you would still be self-conscious, because you would still be able to determine your own existence without the use of your senses. So Avi Chana, the creator of this thought experiment, concludes that the soul is independent from the body and is perceived intellectually. You wouldn't be able to determine if you have a body, since you feel nothing, but you would certainly be aware of your own existence. So that was the first half of the iceberg and there were already a lot of bizarre and thought-provoking concepts within this part of the iceberg. And I'm already working on the second part and the concepts only get crazier with the last concept being the most mind-blowing concept of them all. I hope I'll see you in the next video and if you liked this video make sure to let me know. Bye!